So Joseph, uh, it's been and gone now, the eclipse. I mean, it was a little bit a little bit disappointing, but I think we did see a glimpse. Are you finding much more interest from the general public? I mean, does this, does this, is this a real boon for you know developing the education in astrophysics? Absolutely, and I think we're, we're lucky in, in Ireland, particularly in, in Trinity here, we, we have um, uh, an ethos that scientists are, are open to the public, that we people can come in and ask us questions, it's not just about the, the students that are here, but anyone can come in, that's, that's our job here to, to talk to people, answer questions, talk about our research, make sure we're doing everything responsibly. And something like this is great because people can come in and you see there's there's people in these yellow t-shirts all, all behind me, all the, the astrophysicists in Trinity are, are out on the job, uh, doing what they, what they love, speaking about space and science, so yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great day. And I believe the next one is 2026 here, at least in Ireland. Could you tell us a little bit more about kind of, you know, what's expected or like, will it be a total eclipse or what's... We'll have to wait a long time for, for a yeah. total eclipse. And, and the interesting thing is because the, the moon orbits the Earth, um, every time the moon comes in front of the, in, in between the sun and the Earth, we should see a solar eclipse somewhere on the Earth. But because the moon is ever so slightly out of alignment with the, uh, the Earth and the sun, then a lot of the time the shadow that the... The, uh, the sun cast because of the moon falls somewhere out into space and not on the earth. It's actually rare enough that it, uh, it lands on the earth. Will, uh, when I say rare, it happens a couple of times a year, but generally they're, uh, they're, they're partial eclipses. Totally solar eclipses are very rare. And I think in, in Ireland, uh, sadly, I probably won't be around to see the next one. Uh, it's, it's that far away. Yeah. And I mean, in terms of, say, like the, uh, what you're finding, the, the turnout, do you find it's are you being surprised kind of like is it that it's almost 50 50 really here in terms of say like the gender balance like are you finding then more interest in astrophysics from uh from both genders you know um yeah i, I guess um well something we find just just from like behind the scenes even if you look at uh, the the group we have our, our astrophysicists here i think there's actually there's more more girls and guys um and to be honest, the, the girls are also the better scientists at the moment as well. So uh, I think in terms of astrophysics, uh, the, the guys need to maybe uh, up their up their game a little bit because we're, we're falling behind. But I think that's that's um, that's just what we see at the moment. Uh, I mean, even we're, we're talking there about young people being um, inspired by by scientists and role models. And I mean, some of the some of the girls that we're explaining the science there are the, the, the research they're doing is incredible. Some of the solar physicists here, and I think they're they're role models to us all, not just to, to young people. Sorry, just gonna ask about Mars. How Mars one, but just uh, general and about the aurora and stuff like that. Yeah. That's okay, yeah. So, as well, I, I think it was this week that Mars experienced its own particular aurora, uh, for instance. I mean, how are you finding in the latest developments on Mars in terms of uh, some of the things that have been found, like a dust cloud as well? well I think Mar Mars remains fascinating. The, the, the discoveries that, that are coming out from Mars will, will continue to, uh, to, to blow us away. I, I think we probably would have given it more attention this week. Just by chance, we also had uh, the biggest geomagnetic storm on the sun that we've had in about 10 years, and that gave us uh, northern lights. Even I think in Waterford and Wexford there was there was traces of the Northern Lights, which is very rare. So uh, I think the sun has probably stolen the limelight from Mars this week. But that's okay. We'll, we'll be we'll be back studying Mars again next week. But uh, I think so, something that um, do, doesn't always get much airtime, but it, it's a, a personal interest of mine because a lot of the, the scientists in Trinity are, are solar physicists, so their their expertise is in the sun. Whereas I'm a stellar physicist, so I'm interested in other stars. And even though um, the, the solar eclipse mightn't affect my research directly. Uh, the the sun isn't the only star that has eclipses. So if you think of looking at the, the twinkling stars in the night, um, if they have another body around them, like a moon or a, a planet, what we would see is the um, the same effect. Every so often, the uh, th that planet or that body might come between that star and Earth, and we would see a, a, a stellar eclipse. Now, that, that mightn't be that noticeable or that dramatic, but if you observe it over time and you can say that you see the star's light getting very slightly dimmer every so often, regularly, like it's a period like something is orbiting it. That's one of the best ways we have of discovering exoplanets. So one of the best ways to, to find other planets in the universe is by looking for stellar eclipses. So I think that's a nice thing to, to relate it to today. Here we can see how it affects us on Earth, but also this is something that happens elsewhere in the galaxy and we're using it to find other planets.